morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. It is good to be in the house of prayer one more time. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Is anybody glad that you're here today? Amen. That the Lord has blessed you with one more day, one more sunny day, and we are here. Amen. Despite what's going on in the world, what's going on in the
thank the Lord for his blood that reaches that reaches wherever we need it to reach it reaches
brother Oliver. <laughs> he was, forget the other part, handsome. He was getting down up here, okay? <laughs> the, third, the third Sunday, now, next Sunday is the seventh Sunday. That's it, man, the male court. The third Sunday, October the 20th, we're asking everyone to wear something pink. To wear something pink, anything pink, ribbon, but wear something pink in awareness of breast cancer. Amen. Men's wear pink. Amen. Amen. It's time for the youth and sneaker ball. Yeah! <laughs> they already have the tickets. We just waiting on you to purchase them. You can see Pat, Cassandra, she's not here today, okay. Other parents. Girls and pearls and boys in ties. The tickets are $15 for an adult, $5 for a child. Okay, I don't want to go. I don't like sneakers. I don't want to do this. Buy a ticket. We don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Buy a ticket. Donate it for somebody. Um, if nothing else, a child can. Help a child. Amen. Right. Amen. Uh, Jerry Lewis used to say, Help a child, please. Okay? Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. <laughs> October the 27th, the fourth and last Sunday of the month, after service, everyone is asked to decorate your truck and give treats. Amen. We're doing candy for Christ, and this is after church. Some people at different church call it treat a trunk, a trunk, a treat. Mm -hmm. We're calling candy for Christ. We're asking that you do not dress your kids up as goblins or demons. Um, they don't even have to be dressed up at all. Amen. Where we decorate the cars, uh, we're going to have a prize. Now, those children don't care how your car is decorated. Just have some candy cookies, <laughs> yeah. apples, oranges. They don't care how your car is in the trunk, okay? I can keep all that mess in my trunk and have some candy and still happy, all right? <laughs> Just participate. That's right. That's right. Fourth Wednesday, uh, the church was still in the helping and giving business. Amen. We still need volunteers. Uh, we're going to be preparing and giving out meal to the homeless, and we do need volunteers. To Amen. Be here. And it's, it's not a long time. It's not. Uh, do like me come in. Do a little bit and a piece of chicken and go home. <laughs> but you're helping. Come in fellowship. Amen. All right. Now we're going into. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Also, on our prayer line, which every Tuesday, prayer line every Tuesday, Amen. 7 o'clock, calling in by. 655, our facilitator is Paulette Moore. Amen. Now in October, prayer for healing, healing and wellness. And this is it. Isaiah 53 and 4 through 5. That's for healing. And wholeness, John 10 to 10. So you already know what we're going to be talking about. You can already get it. Put it in your Bible and look it up. Amen. I saw something real important also. A message from Pastor Charles Harvey Jr. for October. How many just really take this and read it? It's a lot of information. Read it. Okay? Uh, read. Reading is fundamental. One of the things, October is a time of transformation and reflection. The harvest seasons is the time for many crops, and when farmers gather their Produce, these changes create a unique and beautiful environment in October. Change also brings new opportunities for reflection. It's God that makes the ultimate change in our lives. This is a message from the pastor. Speaking of the pastor, we're getting ready November the 10th. Amen. Love We love us some Pastor Charles Harvey. We love us some First Lady Kimberly Harvey. 
um, no younger than 10, that Sunday we'll be able to show. We're going to have a little gathering out here. Our assessments are 125 per member. Okay? Amen. 125 is the assessment. We want you to get it. We hope you can get it. If not, don't be like my mama used to do. I ain't going to church this Sunday. I ain't got that 125 off. Look, what you can give, give. What you can give, give. Okay? We're not going to put you out because of that. If so, I would have been put out on the counter. <laughs> Again, in your program, here you go. The sneaker ball, all right? With the sneakers, girls and pearls, boys and ties. Past the love day, November the 10th. Navy blue, kind of green and gold, okay. I'll try to find some of those colors. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. All our sins and griefs to bear. Yeah. What a privilege it is to carry yeah. everything, everything yeah. in God. Yeah. All right, on the light side of it all. Lord, you know I'm really being serious with you. Uh, today, the Pittsburgh Steelers play them boys. I want to say them girls, but them boys, because I'm being respectful. Lord, you know I'm serious. If it's in your will that the Steelers do some damage, Today. Amen. Amen. Let's build ourselves according to the announcements. Um, I got an announcement for this Tuesday. We will not have uh, Bible study on the line this Tuesday uh, because of the conference. So spread the word one to another. This Tuesday we will not have uh, our line. Uh, this Tuesday. But we also need to know for the conference with the bus, who all wants to ride the bus. So we do need to know that. So if y'all could let us know that, that would definitely help out as far as us getting the buses together. So we need to you know, kind of get y'all minds together. If y'all want to go on the bus, y'all let us know, okay?
้องเจ้าฟูนะฮะน้องฟูนะฮะพระไม่เลยงอกเลยต้องอย่าฟีเฮียไปเข้าสับเพิ่ It was your goodness, it was your grace, your mercy. It was nothing but the blood of Jesus that covered us. That's why we are here. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for His blood. I thank God for His blood. We truly thank God for this choir. Amen. Let's give them a hand clap of praise. Singing so beautiful, so angelic. Amen. Songs of Zion. We're thankful for them. To let God use them. Amen. We're grateful to be here today. Thank God for blessing us. Amen. Brought us all the way from January to the First Sunday, and I told you, millions didn't make it. But we won the one that did. And I don't know about y'all, but that's enough for me to tell God, thank you all by yourself. Because I believe all of us in here know somebody that didn't make it this year. And I want you to know that you're not here because of your goodness. Folk, there's some people in the grave life better than your life. We're here because of the grace of God. And give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. We're truly thankful, amen, for our ministries. We're doing an awesome job. And carry on the service. Amen. We're thankful for all of you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We even thankful for if there be any sins or the loss. We thank for you on this day. We, well, I want to say this to all of you all. Today is a good day. Yes, it is. It is. We are here today, not by happenstance. We are here not by accident. You're here today not because of coincidence, but you're here today by the grace of God. Amen. I'm not going to hold you all long. Uh, give me a few minutes. And God has given me an outstanding sermon for today that I truly believe will help us along the way. Those of you that have the Bible, turn with me to Galatians. The sixth chapter. The sixth chapter of Galatians. And Galatians is toward the back of the Bible. In case you didn't know it. If you're not, if you're not quite a Bible scholar. Galatians is toward the back of the Bible. Amen. Galatians is right after second. Corinthians, amen, right before Ephesians. I just want to help us out so we all can be on one accord. Amen, amen. Galatians. Now, you still thumbing in the front. Amen. Something wrong. Amen. Here toward the back of the Bible. Galatians, the sixth chapter. Verse 1. Do we have it? Amen. And it reads as, Brethren, oh brother, if a man or woman be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Least thyself thou also be tempted. Uh -huh. I'm going to read two and three. I don't know if we're going to make it there today, but I'm going to work on it. Bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. 
For if a man think himself to be something, when you really ain't nothing, he lying to his own self. Just for a little while today, I, I want to talk about something. If I'm down, will you help me? Or will you hurt me? What you say? I don't need you all to answer that. I want you to look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. This, this text is going to be kind of tough. Said neighbor, if I'm down, will you help me? Or will you hurt me? I don't need y'all to answer that. Because I don't want y'all lying in the church. If I'm down, will you help me? Will you hurt me? I need to say that one more time. I said, if I'm down, I ain't saying I'm going to be there, but just in case if I am, will you help me? Will you hurt me? Solicit your prayers, please. Gonna do this. No, we have this new modern day church. But I'm a little old folk. I know I am. I don't care what you say about it. Hey child of God. Master, we don't know how strong we are 
until we are tested. I discovered, I discovered that Brian, I discovered it's easy for me to shout in here on Sunday because I'm around a lot of shouting folks already in the church. But oh, what about Monday through Saturday? When I'm all by myself, when I'm being put to the test, are y'all in here? I discovered something. I discovered. I don't know how we're gonna land this plane, but I'm, I'm gonna try to fly the best way I can. So I ask y'all to put your seatbelt on. Every now and then, we might run into a few turbulence. It might get a little bumpy. Are y'all in this house? So, so buckle up and put your seatbelt on. Let me share this with you. Uh, I've learned something, bro, guy. That there are many stages to a storm. Are y'all in here? Either you in a storm, you just got out of a storm. Put your seat there on it because you're headed to the wall. But the thing of it all is not misdeed the storm that's the problem. It's how you handle yourself while you're in the storm. Me, 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 me myself, me, myself, me, myself. I'm not, I'm just not a friend of flying. My wife, when we get on the plane before we get there good, she sleep. And I look over there and say, Lord, how is it that you are able to sleep while we're on this plane? And, and I sit there and I, I pump and I pray all while we are flying. And every little bump, I'm saying, Lord, is this it? Is this it? Is this going to be the end for us? And every little turbulence we hit, my stomach drops to my feet. But I understand now, no matter what that pilot does, ain't nothing I can do. Are y'all in here? I, I don't care if he flip that plane upside down, twist it sideways, pop it to the left, to the right, tilt it back. It ain't nothing I can do. So guess what I have to do? I have to sit there and embrace myself to be able to handle whatever is before me. What are you saying, Reverend? I'm glad you asked. In this life, sometimes we're going to have turbulence. Sometimes our brother and our sister, well, Lord, you should have said this thing I'm good. Sometimes your brother and sister are not going to be able to handle the storm the way you handle it. Are y'all in here? My wife sleeps while she's on the plane, but me, I'm wide awake. And sometimes I try to not even sleep the night before because I won't be able to sleep, but somehow or another I'll sleep before we take off. But once we in the air, I can't find sleep. So, so what am I saying, Reverend? What I'm saying is that it's a possibility that some of us sitting here might fall by the wayside. Is that all right, y'all? Paul, Paul, Paul here. Paul here. Paul starts off by telling us. Y'all bear with me here a few minutes. I declare. I'm not planning on holding y'all alone, but if the Holy Spirit says hold them to 12 o'clock, we just gonna be in this thing. Paul, Paul started off in the fifth chapter. Paul, Paul starts by telling us how we have been set free. And we should not return back to the same old stuff that God took us from. <laughs> Paul told us that. Paul told us. And y'all didn't hear. Paul, Paul was telling us. Paul said, we're, we're no longer under the law. If we're no longer under the law of Moses, you, he said, those that tried to keep the law, they failed along the wayside. Oh, yeah. He said, I want y'all to know something. I want you to know some Saints and ain'ts. He said, I want you to know we're no longer under the law of Moses. We are now under grace and mercy. Oh, yeah. Paul, Paul went on to tell them in the fifth chapter, he was talking about the works of the flesh. He said, but since we're no longer under the law of Moses, we are under the spirit. Paul was telling them not only about the works of the flesh, Paul was telling them about the fruit of the spirit. Are y'all with me? Now Paul go on and bring us up to the sixth chapter. Paul start by saying, brethren. Yes, oh, Paul, hold up. Paul, Paul, Paul addresses the Christian community. Specifically.
specifically the born again believers in the church. He, he addresses us with a family in tone. Paul said, brethren, it's used to denote that Christian emphasizing the sense of a family, the unity in the body within Christ. He didn't say church folk. Are y'all in here? He didn't say the word folk. He, he didn't even say my dog, my homie. Are y'all in here? My boy. Are y'all in here? My sister, my partner, my roadie. Paul, Paul, Paul didn't say it. Paul said, brother, the NIV version says, brothers and sisters. The good news translation said, my friend. So it has to be known in order to be a brother in or a brother or sister, they have to be a family. Are y'all in here? And since we family, Paul said, since we all in here supposed to be family, Paul said, let, let, let's start this thing off. He said, brethren, I need to talk to you for a minute. He said, if a man be overtaken in a fall. Yeah. Really? Yeah, what, what, what do you mean? Uh -huh. Notice this two-level word, uh -huh. if. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What y'all, that not in y'all Bible? Yeah. 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 It, it said, brother, yeah. if a man. Yeah. If is a conditional conjunction. Yeah. Yeah. It's a word that connects clauses yeah. together. Or sins to express a condition. If introduces a condition that creates the possibility that it might happen. Are y'all in here? If that, 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 there's a possibility that this thing can happen. In, in other words, he's saying, if it rains, we won't stay in the house. But we only will stay in the house only if. It rains. All of us sitting here are in some iffy situations. Preaching this house, how I we, 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 we in some iffy conditions. And, and it ain't gonna tell you what might happen within the next minute, the next second, and the next hour. We are in some iffy situations. And we go on, we go on. I don't care how sanctified, how dignified. You might call yourself to be. The book said, if a man be overtaken in a fall, that means man or woman falls in sin. The New Living Translation said that to be overcome by sin is the amplified version. The NIV version said, caught up in sin. <laughs> can, can I preach like this? All right, in his house. Scribes in the first seed. Here I'm reading about scribes in the first seed caught a, a woman in the act of adultery. And I always wonder why did they bring the woman and not the man? Are y'all in here? Have y'all read that yet in y'all Bible? Well, they caught the woman in the act of adultery. But if you notice, in order to commit adultery, it takes two to do it. The old folks said, take two to take. So that let me know she wasn't by herself. Are y'all in here? See, back in the older days, it was a man and a woman. I ain't going to talk about what it is nowadays. I don't even want to get started on that. Are y'all in here? See, see, it used to be man and woman. But now you might find man and man and woman and boy, don't do that hardly. Are y'all in here? And that's why I, 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 talk, I tell folk all the time, I said, you do what you want to do, but I'm going to tell you now, ain't nothing a man can do for me. Same sex can't do nothing for me. Only thing he can do is help me pick up some heavy. Are y'all in here? Ain't, ain't nothing I can do with a man. He hairier than I am. Harder than I ain't nothing we can do. Y'all in here, Reverend, you ain't got no business crossing over there. But if it's the truth, I might as well go and tell you. I often tell 
people all the time and show me in the scripture where God ordained a man and a man. He, he, he created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. Preach in your heart. But the scripture describes in the first he caught this woman in the act of adultery. And I wonder why? Where is the man? Where is the man? Where he is? Where she was by herself? And I find out why they didn't bring the man. Because the woman was the church goal. And the man was the sinner. And some about saints and sinners, we don't worry about the sinner, but we show sure people the hell out of the saints. I wish y'all hit my little dog and pop and everything ain't got no big saying that right there. But some of y'all are not way nasty than that. And hell is, a, is in the Bible. It's something about that. For us as church folk, we, 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 we just cannot grab the concept that we have not arrived. So I, I question where the man, he, he went on about his being. He, it wasn't him that we wanted to bring to Jesus. It was, it was this woman that shot it all over the church. It was this woman that was in the choir. It was one of the mothers on the mother ball. That's who we brought because she know better. But I don't care what she do. She still won. Yeah. Are y'all in here? Yeah. They went there and they brought her to Jesus and said, Jesus, she, she was caught. Put a pen down. We call it. And according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. Are y'all in here? Jesus sent them being the three C's. Cool, calm, and collected. Sit down. Why they thought they had them. Jesus said, that's right. He said, I tell you what, let me do this. Since y'all got it, y'all stay right there. Yeah, yeah, now, each y'all boys come over here and read what that said. And when he was writing, they got done right, and they read where it said, He that had no sin. Y'all go the first song. And Jesus probably by that time picking his teeth. And, 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 and when he looked up, he said, Woman, what happened to your accusers? Are y'all in here? For I always want to put you down when you in your mess, but Lord. Where your accusers at? They were, I know they were right here. That's how you got here because they brought you to me. So where your accusers? Y'all in this house. Since y'all want to talk about what she had done, but don't forget, I know what you've done before you even do it. So where are your accusers? And he, he went on to tell her, said, since they ain't accusing you, I ain't gonna accuse you. He said, go and sin no more. Are y'all in here? So 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 Reverend, what are you saying here? You mean to tell me that? Save, sanctify, born again believers, shouting saints, church folks, filled with the Holy Ghost. You mean to tell me that this verse is for us? Well, just in case you didn't know, Paul did say, brother. And he ain't talking about the world of folks when he said, brother, are y'all with you? Paul talked about us. And he said that because of our humanly, fleshly nature, we inherently flawed and prone to sin. And that is the worst. It's a part of our human condition. And I don't care, I don't care, I don't care how much you come, boy, I love this, this is my kind of preaching right here. I don't care how much you come to church, how long you've been in church, I don't care if you've been here 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 years, it does not matter how much you shout, turn these pews over, how many times you've been baptized, you still got sin. 
o'clock, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Go ahead and touch this old people. You fall down, we can help you. Come on down. We you hurt. You fall down, we can help you. We you hurt. If I stumble on the way, somebody sang a song, heaven is my goal. Each and every day. I got to keep on moving in the right way. And this is the part I like. He said, if I stumble, me there's a possibility I might stumble while I'm on my way. Step aside. Don't you block my way. Because I don't want nobody coming over me. The door of my father's house is open. Lord, I didn't know all oh, yeah. The doors of my mom's house is open. Won't you come? Why wow, the blood is running warm in your veins. Let, let, let me just share this while we're here. Ain't no us perfect. We have not arrived yet. And until the pastor and the preacher stop lying, trying to act like he got it all together, baby, we ain't got it together. We struggling from day to day trying to get there. I preach the sermon, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And I'm going to say this right here. All of us in here are in a cocoon. Are y'all in here? Yes, sir. Everybody in here? You count pills. Yes, and we struggle from day to day trying to get out of our cocoon. Yes, we struggle every day of our life trying to get out of our cocoon. But I got a secret, buddy. You won't get out of your cocoon on this side. You will turn into a butterfly when you go to the other side. That's when you get your wings. And since all of us in our cocoon over here, I ain't got no being down in you while you in your cocoon. The doors of the church is open. The doors of the church. But my father's house is open. Won't she come? While the blood is running warm in your veins. We see that there is none. Yet there's still room in our father's house. Give God a hand clap of praise. For a team. God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. I, I got all these notes. And I ain't touch the surface on it. But the Holy Spirit does the talking. Give God a hand clap of praise. It's time now for our ministry of giving.